Uh, so I want to talk to you uh, about our next topic, which is all about writing equations of lines and circles. So we're taking a brief little break from the coordinate geometry proofs and the slope distance midpoint stuff that we did the last couple days. Um, and now we're just going to talk about writing equations of lines and circles. Um, this will come up later. It's also something that comes up in your placement tests a lot um, for um, if you're changing schools. So this is sort of the perfect time to do it. Um, who knows if that schedule is going to be changed, but whatever. Um, so um, we are going to start by throwing it back a little bit. Now, I want you to think about uh, these three equations of a line. So the slope-intercept form, standard form, and point-slope form. And I want you to do your best to remember what the heck these guys are. So slope-intercept form, as we know and love, this is the very first thing that we learned in algebra. It's y equals mx plus b. So if I had a line like um, y equals one half x uh, minus two, that negative two, that's important. This is our y intercept. It has the coordinate point zero comma negative two. And then we would go uh, up one, remember the slope. So up one and over two, up one and over two. And that is what gives us our line. Whoop, whoop. Um, so if I had to write the equation of the line described here, I want you just to go ahead and answer these three questions. Did you get them right? And this last one's a little tricky because it doesn't give you uh, the slope right off the bat because these first two are kind of snoozy. Um, this one's a little bit of a hint. This zero comma negative two is your y-intercept just like the previous problem I just made up. Um, so here, we've got a y-intercept of zero comma six, which means our x-intercept is going to be three comma zero. That's where our line crosses the x-axis. So what you first have to do is find the slope. Um, and remember, that's change in y over change in x, like we talked about the other day. So zero minus six is negative six. 3 minus 0 is 3, so I've got negative 6 over 3, which is negative 2. So there's my slopey slope. Standard form. So um, this one, the standard form looks like this. Ax plus by equals c. We often call this the cover-up method. Um, if my equation looks like this, 2x plus, um, I don't know, I'm making this up, 4y equals 16. The way we would graph this guy is you would cover up, remember the um, y coordinate, so I can do like this. So I can cover up the y um, because my y, sorry, my x-intercept is my y equals zero. So four times zero is zero. Cover this sucker up, two times x equals 16. So if two times x equals 16, that means x has to equal eight. So my x-intercept is going to be the coordinate point 8, 0. So when y is 0, my x-coordinate is 8. And then, same deal for the y-intercept. My y-intercept is when x has a value of 0. So 2 times 0 is 0. Cover that sucker up. Um, so 4 times y equals 16. Ooh, that means that y has to be 4. So this coordinate point right here is 0, 4. Boom, I've got my two points. I can draw my line and move on. So if the y-intercept and the x-intercept are not given, if I'm just given the slope and then a point, that's kind of annoying because before I had the slope and then I had the y-intercept or I had the x-intercept and the y-intercept, I could figure that out. But if I have the slope and the point, that's when you use point-slope form. So if you remember this one, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Um, if I gave you an equation that looked like this, I want you to first tell me what is um, the point, the starting point here, and then what is the slope. So your starting point is going to be the opposite of whatever is here. So I, it looks like I've got negative 2 and positive 14. It's actually positive 2 and negative 14. So my uh, starting point would be 2, 14, 
right here to comma, oh, I'm so sorry, that is a botch. So two comma negative 14, pardon moi, two comma negative 14. And then I use my slope. So up to, boom, boom, over one, two, three. Ah, up to, one, two, over one, two, three. And then, ba -ba -da -ba, I've got my line and I'm done. So if I read the equation of the line with a slope of negative five through the point three comma five and write the equation of the line with blah, 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 so go ahead and do this guy. And then tell me if you were right. Awesome, this should be pretty straightforward. Now these are a little tricky. So what we've talked about before is how important the slope is. So the slope is involved in no matter what kind of equation you're talking about. So the slope here, what you wanna figure out is uh, what could possibly be the slope? So it's going to be my change in Y, as we discussed the other day, over change in X. So nine minus nine over one minus negative 12. So I get zero over 13. That means my slope is zero. So do you remember what this looks like? I'm gonna scooch this guy down to give us a little room. So if my axis looks like this, I've got the coordinate point one comma nine and negative 12 comma nine. So here's one comma nine and negative 12 comma nine. Here is my line. This is straight flat. So um, we know it has a slope of zero and uh, it is perfectly horizontal. And so my equation here, if I were to give you, if I were to ask for what this point is, well, this is zero comma nine. So if you look here, er, 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 all of my y's are nine. So this equation is y equals nine. The slope of this guy is zero, but the equation is y equals nine. And then this is sort of the opposite because if you notice here, my x's are the same. So if I found my slope, I would do nine minus 10 over two minus two, ah, negative one over zero. You can never, ever, ever divide by zero. So this slope is what we call undefined, undefined. And so that undefined slope means that my line is perfectly vertical. So if I draw my line like this, I'm gonna scoochie down a little bit. Um, and here is my coordinate point. So two comma nine and two comma 10. <laughs> I know it's just teeny tiny, but look, perfectly vertical line. And if you look here, if I were to also ask you for what that point is, this would be two comma zero. So I've got two comma 10, two comma nine, and two comma zero. If you look, every single x coordinate is two. So then I know the equation of this guy is x equals two. Again, the slope is undefined, but my equation is x equals two. So next bit about circles. So looking at these two circles, what do you think is important about them? So I'm hoping that you said, well, their size. So uh, the size is definitely important. So we can see that the green one's bigger than the red one, but also their location matters. And so the location for a circle um, is determined by what we call the center, as you know. And then the size is determined by the radius. And if you had to define what the radius is, what do you think it is? And if you had to define what a circle is, go ahead and uh, type in your best guess. So I like to think of a circle as sort of the set of all points that are equidistant from a center point. So I've got my center here and I've got a point that is a certain distance away. I am now going to create as many points as I can that are all that same distance away from the center. This is pretty crude, but whatever. And so there is my beautiful circle. This circle is determined by an infinite number of points, an infinite number of points, all the way around. So the equation of the circle is this.
where A comma B is your center and your radius is R right here. So your radius is R and the center, I'm gonna change this to green, and um, the center is A comma B. So uh, sketching this circle, go ahead and try it on your own. And here I know my center is two comma four. So two comma four, I'm just gonna estimate where this is. And then I know my radius is going to be the square root of this guy, because remember this is R squared. So my radius is going to be five. So I can go like five units up, five units over, five units down, boom. And my circle would look something like that. Cool? All right. So uh, that's it for this information. And um, try your best on the next worksheet. And I will uh, talk to you later. Thanks.